after such a historic night last night. It's time for game number two of Pro Volleyball here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, as the Rise play host to the Columbus Fury. Come on in and stay a while. I'm Brett Loftus. She's Elena Schlar. And tonight, Elena, it is history here in Michigan. The first ever PVF game here in the state of Michigan. And also a legend here in Kathy George, which you know all so well. Got to coach her first ever professional volleyball game. Absolutely. I mean, pro volleyball in the U.S. is here, and it's here to stay. This has been a long time coming, and seeing Kathy George at the forefront of it is no surprise. She's been a trailblazer in women's volleyball since she started coaching. Being able to see her out on this court in the state of Michigan that she's made such an impact in, it's going to be a great night. On the other side for Columbus, history for them as well. You got Coach Angel Perez. He was a Puerto Rican national team legend, one of the greatest male volleyball players internationally all time. He's also the only Latino coach in this league. It's going to be historic to watch him coach against Coach George tonight. And when we got to talk to Coach Angel, he said that this it's just so surreal being able to be here, coach in this league. And growing up, you know, you watch the NFL, the NBA, and now there's a pro volleyball league that you can watch as well in the United States. And being able to see him out here coach and represent in the inaugural season is just incredible. Let's take a look at our league as a whole, and let's take a look around the U.S. Seven teams here in the inaugural season of the PVF, and they stretch far and wide. Obviously, here tonight in Grand Rapids, the rise, Columbus down in Ohio. Ohio, always that Michigan Ohio rivalry southeast of Ibe in Atlanta they won the inaugural game last night against the supernovas of o Omaha Nebraska and then Orlando down there in Florida you also have the thrill in Vegas and the mojo out in San Diego seven teams but dispersed throughout the 50 states also the Grand Rapids and Columbus also tied third in the rankings. Let's look at what our other five teams are at in the rankings thus far. Obviously, Atlanta able to overcome number one Atlanta last night. A really big win for them and a statement win, obviously, for many reasons. But obviously, when you look at the rankings, a really big win in that perspective as well. And these preseason rankings were decided by the coaches in the league. They're looking at the other teams they're going to play against, seeing the strength of those rosters. And, of course, tonight we have both Columbus and Grand Rapids tied for third. So this is two very well-matched-up teams from the head coaches of the league. That's what they decided on. There's some star power on both sides of the court tonight. And this is, you know, first-ever ranking, first match for both of these teams, first time they actually get to have competition, not against their own team in their own gym. So it's a huge milestone night for both of these programs. Hey, and the Fury, they got a number one vote for a reason. It's going to be interesting to see both the Rise and the Fury in action tonight. Much more on our pregame show up next here on the PBF on YouTube.
back here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where it's the home opener in the inaugural game here in Grand Rapids, Rapids franchise history as they play host to the Fury of Columbus. Let's take a look at our starting lineup, starting out with the rise of Grand Rapids, led by the legendary Kathy George. Elena, when you look at the starting lineup here tonight, big keys when you look at this lineup for the Rocks. Yeah, this lineup is absolutely loaded, but the biggest things that stick out to me is their setter, Ashley Evans. She's one of the elite setters in the country, and she's finally back playing on home soil. Looking at her, she's going to run a very fast-paced offense, and then you put in Claire Chasse, a name that NCAA volleyball fans know and love and have seen, along with the veteran Amelia Dimitrova, who has been playing for 17 years. This is going to be a very fast offense, and they're absolutely loaded in the front row. Everybody loves to play up pace. And on the other side, when you look at the Fury, again, they're led by Angel Perez. He was a setter just like yourself. They are a team where I know it's a cliche in volleyball. Their teams are led by their quarterbacks, a.k.a. the setters. Couldn't be more true on this side, and especially if you're able to get that to the middle. Absolutely, and Rai Santos has loads of experience. She's been playing pro for almost 10 years now, and she's already played under Coach Perez. So having that set of relationship with your coach is huge. But when I look at this lineup, I see middle blockers. I see Raynell Jones, Caitlin Horde. Also on this roster is Jenna Rosenthal, Asia O'Neill. A big part of this Columbus Fury team's identity is going to be those middle blockers. Their strength going into this season is going to be their defense. They're going to put up an absolute wall in the front row so really excited to see how their tough defense strong block is going to do against the fast offense of the rise kind of the rich get richer on that side when you look at the fury there in the middle those are your starting lineups tonight as grand rapids and columbus prepare to get going national anthem and then on the other side first serve here in michigan
moments away here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. History about to be made as the Rise play host to the Columbus Fury, the first ever PVF game here in Grand Rapids, but not the first ever PVF game. Atlanta last night, history was indeed made. 11,624, the official attendance record in indoor USA volleyball history. In the first ever game of the PVF, that sets a benchmark and a level of expectation now for pro, for the Pro Volleyball Federation. Absolutely, and what that tells us is volleyball in the United States is wanted. Fans are showing up. We're breaking attendance records. More people are watching on television, and it's about time that a league like Pro Volleyball Federation comes and is able to give fan bases what we want and not seeing these incredible athletes playing on our home soil, the athletes that we watched play throughout their college career. Now we have them back playing pro at home, which is just honestly impossible for me to put into words because this is a dream. Playing volleyball my entire life, this is a dream come true. And not only are people coming out watching it, they're also doing what you all are doing at home. Somewhere between 10 to 14,000 concurrent viewers on the YouTube stream last night. Again, history, I, like, I think we tossed that word around a little bit too much now, but truly, the fans inside of the Van Ando Arena right now, the fans watching on YouTube, and the players that are about to play on the floor tonight, it is history we're witnessing. I honestly am trying not to tear up right now seeing this in person, being able to actually watch this happening, because like I said, this league is historic. We have so many players that are able to come home, play in front of friends and family, and people are showing up for this sport of volleyball. It's been such an incredible year for volleyball, just breaking attendance records left and right, and now we're able to do it at a professional level as well. It's truly just mind-blowing and a surreal experience. Second ever game of the PVF. And it is here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Expected attendance here tonight of 7,805 here inside of the Van Andel Arena, an arena that also plays host to the Grand Rapids Griffins and AHL team and the Grand Rapids Gold, a G League team here. But none have really been able to touch this electric crowd here tonight. Coming to watch some of the best players we have to offer here in the United States in volleyball. I'm Brett Loftus, Miss Elena Schlar. Are you ready? I am more than ready right now. I have been waiting for first serve in this match since, honestly, this league was announced. We saw the first match last night, second match of the inaugural season. This is going to be incredible. We're going to watch some great volleyball. And the atmosphere is absolutely amazing in this gym right now. All these fans showing up to watch some high-level elite volleyball. In the fury of Columbus, team was announced on February the 17th of 2023 the grand rapids rise the first city awarded a team all the way back in 2022 on december the 5th kathy george the first coach hired in this league on the other side angel perez international men's volleyball legend and the countless stars we're going to talk about here on the hard wood tonight preparing for first serve again in a league that we've really been waiting for 12 to 14 months and it's all coming to be surreal here tonight in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Again, some of the stars here tonight. The number one pick is questionable to play tonight, Asia O'Neal. Obviously, you remember her in Texas this year. She was a part of that national championship, back-to-back -back national championship squad. She's, again, what on the preseason all-league watch list as well. On the other side, uh, we also have for Grand Rapids and Claire Chalsey, big-time star to watch as well tonight, Atlanta. Absolutely, and if you've been a recent NCAA volleyball fan, you know both of these names all too well. Being able to see them continue to play, their fans being able to watch them. Asia O'Neal, like we mentioned, questionable with an injury, but Claire Chasse is out there on that court, and all these fans are going to get the opportunity to see her play again in the United States. And again, majority of the squads will be players here from America, but a lot of international talent as well makes it into this American League. Absolutely, and that's huge. On the Grand Rapids rise, we got veteran Amelia Dimitrova, who has been playing 17 years overseas, and now she decided to take that next step in her career and help build this league. She was talking to me earlier and said she decided to be 
to join this league because she wanted to be in something groundbreaking. She wanted to set the future and pave the way for the next volleyball players coming up. So we have international stars. We have stars from the U.S. that we've seen throughout the college ranks. It's just really a star-loaded league, and I can't wait to see this match get going, especially Michigan, Ohio. These are two states where volleyball is rich, like club, college, and now you have pro teams to add into those states as well. It's also two states where rivalries run very, very deep. And speaking of Amelia, her husband decided to join her. He's on the coaching staff here at Grand Rapids, Coach Dennis Dimitrov. It looks like we're about ready to get underway here inside Van Andel Arena, inside of a sold out crowd capacity here for volleyball at 7,800. Back to serve for the rise and start us out tonight. The veteran Ashley Evans. Hey, Pro Volleyball. Welcome to Grand Rapids. Is the Columbus Fury able to welcome them in as they score the first point here tonight? Textbook point right there. A nice serve receive set and then attack from the rookie Cooper, putting that one away. That's a great way to start off your professional career with a kill. The po first point. Caitlin Horde. Talk about her a lot tonight. As Grand Rapids scores their first point in the history, is who else would it be? Is Miss Chausse? Claire Chausse. I have a good feeling she's going to be a fan favorite here in Grand Rapids, and that first kill is just a, a little intro to what she's going to be able to do. She's now back at the line. And sells out. Back to back points for the Rocks. A great pass to start off that point, and I like the set decision there by Rye Santos. Samantha Dreschel just cut it a little bit too sharp, but they're getting some good in system passes to start off the match. And L. Jones, big time attack handle. They go right back to her. She's able to slam it in the back corner. Raynell Jones, an absolute legend during her time at Maryland and expect her to make a really big impact. We previewed earlier the setters and the middles for this Fury team and right there we saw a preview of what they could do. Raynell Jones is an incredible threat in the front row and I expect the Rise to put up a big block in front of her all night. Can I put a big block up in front of that? There's Absolutely. Right back. Absolutely, and I mean, part of this game, when you're a setter, if you see another team get a middle kill, you want to get your middles involved to start off the match. You want to make them a threat because as the match goes on, you start leaning on your pin hitters. So being able to establish the middle right away is key. Black tip. Chelsea from the back row. Drexel. This one sails wide. Dimitrova had some heat on that ball from the right side pin. We talked about her. She's a veteran. One of the best things about her game is just the range that she has as an attacker. Right there, she wasn't necessarily showing off the range, but she's showing off the power that she has. When you combine those two, that's when you get a veteran player like her. Amelia also one of two franchise players here for each squad. As Reagan Cooper answers right back for the Fury. Nice kill there by Cooper. She's a little bit off balance, but she's able to take some heat off that ball and kind of place it in front of that left back defender. She knows that there's a middle in there serving, so the libero is not in left back defense. Not the best serve received. Maybe keep it alive. Raynell far pin. Too much on it. Just a little bit too much heat on that slide, but what I really like from this Columbus team right now is that setter Rye Santos is trying to get her middles involved as much as she can early. We talked about them being a blocking threat, but they're going to be a huge offensive threat in this match as well. And like you mentioned, Rye, she's got that relationship with Coach Perez, was on his back-to-back -back championship teams down there in the Puerto Rican League. Chausse throws off a little rhythm. Fury stays with him. Schlegel. Slam home through the block, tip Simone Abbott. Michigan native getting a first kill of her professional career in the United States playing for Pro Volleyball Federation. Goes straight through those blockers on the Columbus side. What a special moment for Simone Abbott. 
Again, you mentioned Simone, her first kill in her American career, a seven-year pro. A lot of experience here between both of these squads. And then a block to add on. She and Nia Grant combined. Beautiful block set up there by the rise. But I will say, I think that right now, we talked about setting middles. I talked about how important that is. But you don't want to become too predictable. And I feel like right now, when Columbus is getting a perfect pass, they're forcing the middle a little bit too much. Go right back to the middle. And an attack error. First attack error we've seen. I mean, and on the other side there, Elena, seeing a lot of back row action over here for the Rams. And the back row attack is a huge part of professional volleyball. We're seeing it to start to pick up in NCAA and college volleyball. But I'm not surprised that they're using Claire Chasse out of the back row a lot. Dimitrova finds an empty piece of hardwood. That's a better move. Speaking of the back row attack there, I love that they're running Dimitrova out of that back row in the right back. We call that a D-ball. So they're able to spread the offense all the way to that right side pin when setter Ashley Evans is in the front row and doesn't have a middle running behind her. Able to keep their offense from going pin, going pin to pin. Being very aggressive there at the service line, Simone Abbott with the service error. Something we've seen earlier when we were here at the pass and receive earlier today, Elena, and had a lot of people wondering, Serve, you were really good at the service line. Tell us about those different types of serves we'll see here tonight. Yeah, I think right now going into this match, you don't really know what the other team's serve receive pattern is going to look like. So you want to kind of test it out. In this first set, they're probably testing the waters a little bit. But the biggest goal from that service line is to get the other team out of system so that they cannot run their offense to start off the point. Both teams out of system and an attack here there for the rise. Ashley Evans going up strong. I feel that all too well. When you're a setter and you get an opportunity to try to attack that ball, it's like, it was probably the highlight of my career being able to get some kills. She just misses that one wide. Bryce Santos, we mentioned she played down there in Puerto Rico for Coach Perez. She also played at Arkansas. This one deflected all the way back to the back row, digging it out at it. And Mitrova sells it. No. Able to get a block tip. Award that one to Grand Rapids. Abbott's teammates giving her all the pride right now. That was a fantastic rundown by her. Great coverage to be able to keep her team alive, and then they scored on the kill. But the highlight of that play is her pursuing that ball and having her teammates back on the coverage. Right back on the other end, the Fury answers back. Maria Schlegel. Maria didn't start playing volleyball until age 21. She certainly does not look like it. That's a veteran move right there, hitting that ball through the block. A little bit of a thumb down to be able to find the seam in the defense. Native of Spain, a member of the Spanish women's national team. Dimitrova gets it through, but dug out by Santos. Over there to the official in the rise. Again, back and forth it seemingly has been here in the past couple points. And that's exactly what I expected going into this match because like we touched on a little bit, these teams have only played against each other in their own gym. So this is their first real competition. They're definitely still trying to get into the groove. And both coaches said as much. They said, hey, we don't even know who's going to be on the other side, much less being able to prepare and watch tape. A good shot from Kayla Caffey. What a beautiful save from Ashley Evans coming all the way out of the back row. She's a back row setter, so she has to try to go up with one hand, save that ball without getting in the net, and then Kayla Caffey is up on time, able to bail her out by getting a nice kill. Beautiful, beautiful run there. The night at the net that time is a rise, rises up. Once again, that's an out-of-system play there, so the Rise is able to set up their block. Textbook bl book blocking form there. The Fury should have been covering their outside hitter a little bit better, but great block there for the Rise. They're getting a little bit momentum in this first set. Kayla Caffey with that last block. Though the Fury able to capture some momentum again, you probably heard this name before, Miss Caitlin Horde. That is a name that was definitely in my nightmares during college volleyball because of right here what she can do. When Caitlin Horde goes up to attack, she just keeps elevating. She gets up so high, and that's what makes her so efficient is she's able to hit over the top of blockers. Between Penn State and Nebraska, Caitlin was a three-time All-American at the collegiate level. Just on cue, the superstar starting to arise here, Miss Kayla Cat. 
Speaking of all Americans and being able to rise up when they're attacking, no pun intended there, Kayla Caffey gets up so high so fast and she seems to have a great connection to start off the match with setter Ashley Evans. Kayla was a part of that 2022 National Championship team at Texas. And we're talking about this service line that's starting to come into play, Miss Alamo. Nice little service run going so far from Claire Chasse back there. Haven't been giving her enough credit so far, but she's doing a great job making the Furies passers work, getting them out of system, and that's what's allowing her side of the net to get their offense running. That's what we like to call broadcasters jinxes. A service error will give it back to Columbus. Yep, yep, I apologize for that one, Claire. Great service run, but that tends to happen, right? We we talk about how good something is, and <laughs> that's on us. That's on us. You also may see more up to pace and getting rushed back to the service line. 15-second <laughs> service line clock, so just keep that in mind in between the last coin. As on cue, Miss Caffey continues to, again, rise up. This connection between Evans and Kathy has just been incredible so far, especially in the first set of their first match. That connection's really difficult to build on a team, and they have it going already. How about Grand Rapids up by six, first time out of the night, here on the PVF on YouTube. Kayla Caffey at the service line here for the rise, and she's played what some may call perfect tonight, Elena. Absolutely, and you look at the stats, she's four for four, she's batting a thousand. But what I really wanna highlight, which I touched on a little bit before we went to that timeout, was her connection with setter Ashley Evans. That's a connection that takes years to build. They seem to have it just three weeks into training together. Able to get it home, Simone Abbott, that's her second kill tonight. You talk about building those connections. Coach George and Coach Perez both spoke too. I want to build those connections beyond the floor as well. Absolutely. I mean, that's a huge part of being on a team and building your culture. And these teams haven't had the opportunity to do that yet because they've only been in the gym together for three weeks. And that's something that as you build a team and you start figuring out your identity and your culture, a lot of that happens off the court. And then you're able to see the fruits of that when you are actually on the court. A lot of things these two teams don't have to figure out, especially with so much veteran experience. Adopted a lot of the international rules in play as Chelsea slams another home. Eight subs, two liberos can sub each set, and that 15-second serve clock, things that are a bit different. Claire Chaussey's game, not different at all. Claire Chasse flying out of the back row. She also seems to have a great connection with setter Ashley Evans right now, who is running a fantastic offense to start this first set. Seven-point lead here for the rise. Is not really ready for that, is Miss Samantha Drexel. 
One thing that I'm seeing so far in this first set that I'm absolutely loving is the usage of the back row attack. You see right there that Simone Abbott on the side of the rise was already releasing to go block the middle, and then they run Drexel out of the back row, doesn't have a blocker up in front of her. That's a great usage of an attacker when they're in the back row because you can spread that offense. Setters in the front row, you might not have an attacker on that right side pin unless you use that back row attack, and we're seeing both sides really utilize their back row attackers right now. Ivania Ortiz de Jesus checking in. She also played for Coach Perez down in Puerto Rico with Pink and De Corazal, a team that won back-to-back -back titles there in the Puerto Rican league. Drexel takes it out, right back to her, and able to get another kill. Really smart shot there by Drexel. She sees that right now Grand Rapids defenders are a little bit deep in the court. So she takes a little bit of heat off of it, just kind of drops that right in front of the defender's base. That's a really hard ball to pick up, especially when you're expecting her to hit it full speed at you. And perhaps some momentum captured there is also taken away by Ortiz de Jesus at the service line. So now Simone Abbott, we mentioned she's got two kills here tonight. Back in 2018, she was the best outside hitter in the French Cup. She's done it all tonight, though. Through the black tip, Maria Schlegel. Beautiful swing there by Schlegel. She's going after the hands of the blocker. That's something, as an attacker, you don't want to be afraid of. And when you're a pro, that is a really big part of your game, is knowing that you're going to have a big block in front of you, but knowing how to utilize it to your advantage. Go after those hands to try to score. Somehow kept alive. Chelsea clips the tape. Leon just putting it back over. In system. Back row attack and some more success from it. Reagan Cooper, the Texas native. Absolutely loving the usage of the back row attack, but I want to highlight a little bit earlier in the play, we saw Maria Schlegel dive to the floor, keep that point alive. Those are the type of effort plays that make your teammates want to work harder for you, and then it pays off with a kill like that. That can be a momentum changer. Tried to go with the slide play. Point awarded, though, to the Fury. And Maria Schlegel getting up there, able to put up a nice block. She's reaching out and then pressing her hands in so that that ball is able to hit off of Grant on the slide and score them a point. Even I didn't catch that in real time. Caught a piece of Grant on the way down. Great look there on our replay. Dimitrova, Santos. Chalsey, able to get it home. Claire Chasse is just showing off her range as an attacker. She gets up so high, but she has such great court vision. So she's able to see there that the blockers in front of her aren't taking the line. They're not all the way to that antenna. So she's able to cut it down the line and just has too much power for that right back defender. Claire was one of the first three players signed here in Grand Rapids. Net violation called on the Fury. First net violation we've seen called here tonight. And the timeout. Coach Perez wants to use another. Getting down to winning time, at least late here in set number one.
You always need a good quarterback to run your offense through and well here tonight. But it's been the story of the Rise offense, and they're running it through Ashley Evans. Ashley Evans is such a high IQ setter, and right now she's showing it off. She's running a master class for the Rise's offense to start the first set. Right at the timeout, Caitlin Horde showing off some offense. Great way to respond right there for the Fury. Such a great decision there to go to Caitlin Horde. Ray Santos sees Claire Chasse is already releasing to that left side pin, so Caitlin Horde's going to have a one-on-one -on -one up the middle, and she's able to score. We saw a couple late set comebacks last night and had our Orlando Atlanta game, but not right there. That's going to get the rise four points away from winning their inaugural set in team history. Speaking of Ashley Evans, now she goes back to the service line. She started us out there tonight. Going to try to serve us out here in set number one. An overpass. Chasse. Easy. Right now, this Rise team is just scoring in system, out of system. Right there, Claire Chasse shows pretty early the shot that she's taking, and the Fury defense didn't make a change in their defense, so I'd expect in the second set to see them maybe change where the right back defender is standing. Chasing it down. Fury out of system. Cooper, though, able to get it over. Dimitrova. Dug out that time by Chelsea. Dimitrova again denied at the net. Rise trying to set it up. Claire. Oh, my. <laughs> Give it up for CC Grand Rapids. Claire Chasse with the kill, but the highlight of that point was the coverage of the Rise team. They're able to get their hitters opportunity after opportunity. They know that this Columbus block is big, so they're having their teammates' backs able to cover up the ball and give them another chance to score. Cooper. Chasse again. Here we go to the middle, but it is blocked. The other star here of set number one, Kayla Caffey. Caffey and Chasse are a names that we are going to be hearing a lot in this Grand Rapids franchise. Right there, teaming up for a great block to give the rise set point. Back row attack. Just wide. Fury wanted a touch. They do not get one. Will we have a challenge here from Grand Rapids? I think Coach George wants to take a look at it. They will. They are challenging a block touch. So, Elena, two challenges per set. If you win, you keep it. And obviously, we're going to get to see this great Bolt 6 technology that the lead is going to have on display. And the Bolt 6, for viewers at home who don't necessarily know what that means, it's 22 HD cameras around the facility that are able to help with challenges. So it makes the challenges go a lot quicker. If you're an NCAA volleyball fan, you know how challenges can sometimes last a few minutes. This system is going to be able to make a really clear view of whether there's a touch or not. What do you see here, Elena? I don't think I see a touch. I'm looking at Reagan Cooper's right hand, and I don't see any movement. I'm looking to see if her finger's moving at all. Um, I don't see anything, but I'm not the expert when it comes to deciding these challenges. I'll leave that up to the challenge ref, who they actually have a ref who's dedicated to looking at these challenges off-site, sending back what they see, and so they're able to make the correct decision. Even though we're in Michigan, that replay site is located down in Frisco, Texas. Again, some of the things that can be challenged, obviously we have some great technology with Bolt 6 and Volley Station. Now, you see no line judges. You haven't seen them all night long. That's because it is tracked in here, the same thing as we're seeing with these replay what can be challenged though a block a touch or no touch the last touch of a set uh, net fault or no net fault antenna touch or no touch and then foot fault or no foot fault and after further review that point is going to stand with Columbus coach George perhaps smartly using that challenge still on set point so now Caitlin Horde she'll serve for the Fury and they're going to have to defend off this rise team for quite a few set points. Oh. 
player, Charles Set. Set number one in Grand Rapids history goes to the right. The inaugural set here in Grand Rapids goes to the rise 25-17. I'm Brett Loftus. She's Elena Schlar. Elena, there in set number one. It was all about that Grand Rapids offense. If you're Coach Perez in that huddle, what were you telling your team in between sets? Absolutely. I think going into this set, they want to pick up a little bit of the effort on the defensive side. Yes, Grand Rapids right now is running a really fast offense. If you're not able to get your blockers up there to put up a solid block, then the defense needs to be hustling in the back row. We saw a couple balls drop without any bodies going to the floor to try to pursue them. Mitrova gets the first point here in set number two for the rise. Having that veteran leadership has been oh so key for Grand Rapids. Absolutely. Ashley Evans going to Dimitrova there. Two of the most experienced players on this rise team. They're also the captains and the leaders of this team, which has a couple young rookies and first-year professional players on it. Raynell Jones blocked it to net. You don't see that very often. 
No, but right now on the Columbus Fury side, we're seeing a bit of a misconnect between setters and middles. That's something that's firing right now for Grand Rapids. Want to see the Fury get that connection going a little bit better. And an attack you. Elena, I know you played for Coach George. After a big win in that set number one, what was she telling the squad over there in the huddle? She's probably just hyping them up. I mean, this atmosphere, being able to play in this opportunity, she's probably just reminding them how important that is to take it all in, to embrace it, but also keep your foot on the gas pedal right now. Don't let up. Things are going their way. They're getting their offense running really well. They're serving bullets from the service line. So keep that going, and they're going to be able to be successful. She was the first coach ever hired here in the PBF. She was also the first woman to ever coach in the Division I Final Four back with UT Arlington back in 1989 as another attack era back-to-back -back points for the Fury. And it seems like if there is a way back for the Fury to capture some momentum, it's going to be playing the rise into some mistakes. Absolutely, and that all starts from the service line. You need to try to get the rise out of system a little bit more so that their offense has to try to be more creative to find ways to score. Slice shot not to be. Now three up. Obviously, tonight means a whole lot. Obviously, last night meant a lot. The inaugural game here, the inaugural game for both these franchises, the Rise and the Fury. But as a lot of people have said, a lot of coaches have said around the league, this is a sprint in both the marathon. Tonight means a whole lot, but you got to have your eyes set on that May 19th championship. And right now, the Fury are sprinting and have sprinted ahead 4-3. to three. This is a very dangerous rotation right now. Great for the Fury, dangerous rotation for the Rise because Maria Schlegel back there on the service line has such good range as a server. We saw her take a little bit of heat off that topspin serve, drops right in front of the service receivers. A whistle. And the point awarded to Grand Rapids. In that first set, we saw some pretty clean volleyball from the rise side, and we started to see bunches of errors a little bit from the Fury. So what I want to see the Fury do right now is get a kill, side out fast, and get themselves back on the service not line. Don't let the mistakes bundle together. Chelsea. Right now able to get a piece of it. Go back far pin, dug out on the back line. Cooper, push. This one dug out by Leon. The longest rally we've seen tonight. Dimitrova kept alive by Santos. Cooper. Big time swing, but somehow kept off the floor. And a net touch, the Fury able to win that point. What a great rally we just saw. Fantastic defense on both sides. And we really started to see the Fury's defense, their backcourt come alive. They're keeping balls alive. We saw some beautiful digs. When you're able to play like that, like I said, you kind of get your teammates amped up, and it makes them want to work harder when they see the girl on the court next to them working just as hard. Raynell Jones starting to put in some work. She comes from a pedigree of athletes. Mom and dad, both basketball players at Maryland. In fact, her mom was on the Canadian national team in basketball. And right now, again, obviously an outstanding volleyball player, a big reason why the Fury have been able to get back into this one. Cooper. Rise a bit out of system. Fury keep the momentum as Caitlin. Hoover gets their first kill at set number two. This rotation for the Fury is going to be a really good one that they want to keep going. You have Raynell Jones on that service line. She has a great serve. She's able to mix it up. And then you have Caitlin Hoard in the front row, who's been connecting pretty well with setter Rye Santos. They want to keep this rotation going and get as many points in it as possible. Back row attack from Schlegel. Chalsea. Seems like they gotta get back to her in this round. That connection between Claire Chasse and Ashley Evans out of the big, that's what we call that back row quick attack, has just been lights out so far in this match. And that's a really difficult to connection to build as well. I've been really impressed with how Ashley Evans is able to connect with all of the hitters on her side of the net so far.
block tip. Chalce kept alive. Cooper again. Chalce again, and how about it? Claire Chalce, I mean, there's just some athletes who can just take over. Claire Chasse is absolutely one of those athletes. We saw her do that in college playing for Louisville, and now we're seeing it in her professional career as well. When we talked to head coach Kathy George earlier, she talked about Claire Chasse, and she said she's just a leader by example. She's a player that goes out there and competes and plays hard, but she's also goofy and fun-loving. She's just one of those players that you love to play beside and is easy to root for, especially when she's killing the ball like she just did there. The Wisconsinite started playing at age nine. Seems like Fury player is... Caitlin Hoard has to take a seat. Coach Perez motioned like she was bleeding on her right hand. And obviously, no matter what level you're playing at, you can't have somebody out there bleeding on the floor. So a stoppage in play. Another tight set here. We saw it. set number one, if you're just joining us, 25-17 in favor of the rise. It was very tight, just like this, Elena, but then it just seemed like that connection. You keep talking about with Charles Say, as well as Kayla Caffey, with their setter and Ashley Evans. It just propelled them in the back half of that set. Absolutely, and as a former setter, I know firsthand how important that connection is, but also how difficult it is to foster a connection with players you haven't played a long time with. But Ashley Evans is one of the best setters in this entire country. Such a high IQ player and leader for this team. She's just showing off right now with their offense. Dimitrova, right in Reagan Cooper. Chalce. Talk about finding hands. She's finding floor, she's finding hands, and most importantly, she's finding points. Claire Chasse really can do it all, but the most impressive part of her game to me is not when you get that perfect set and you have a one-on-one -on -one blocker and you kill that. It's those plays where she's out of system. She has a well-formed block in front of her, but she's still smart enough to see those blockers' hands go after it and find a way to score. And an ace, Simone Abbott. The crowd absolutely loved that one. Beautiful serve by Simone Abbott, just dropping right in between Columbus Fury passers. You want to be able to serve the seams, try to make passers move and talk exactly what she did. Ford able to slam it right down into the face of Dimitrova. Really smart decision there by Santos to try to get Horde going. So far, that's their one attacker that has been fairly efficient for her. The rest of the attackers are struggling a little bit, so you want to definitely go to an attacker who you know you have that connection going, especially when that player is Caitlin Horde, who's one of an all-time great from Penn State. Yeah, Caitlin Horde, she led the country in blocks her long season. You mentioned at Penn State in her long season at Nebraska, led the country in blocks, and an ace on the other end for the Fury. And it seems like here in set number two, when one team able to capture uh, just a bit of momentum, the other team gets it right back. Fury, Schlegel, kept off the floor by Abbott. Dimitrova steals one back, and she's pumped up. I've talked about Ashley Evans a lot, and her connection with Dimitrova is phenomenal. They are just on the same page right now. That's a beautiful shot from Dimitrova. She's a lefty, but she cuts that thumb down, and she's able to make that ball land inside of the 10-foot line where the off blocker is defending. And how hard is that? I mean, you see a lot of south balls at the high school. Some at the college level hardly ever see that at, at the pro level, and she has so much success. Being able to connect with a lefty is pretty difficult because as a setter, that's not usually the attacker that you're setting. You're usually setting, you know, right-handed attackers, but both Evans and Dimitrova have so much experience that I'm not surprised that they're able to connect right away. You also talk about feeding your attackers. Caitlin Hord's getting fed up front right now as the Fury take a two-point lead. Their largest tonight at any juncture in the match has been three. Chalce, left-handed attack. <laughs> she could score any time right now. 
Claire Chasse in a bit of an out of system situation there. She goes up, it's probably just trying to keep this ball alive, but places it so well in what we call the donut, that center of the court, also known as a campfire, whatever you want to call it. It makes the Fury defenders all dive in and try to talk about who can take it. What about a bagel? I guess you could say that. I prefer a donut. <laughs> <laughs> this one dug out. Debbie Trova. Gets it through the block and down. Rise of tied it right back up at 11. Dimitrova is so impressive because she has such great hand contact. And when you're able to have good hand contact on the ball, you're able to place it wherever you want. Right there, she's going down the line, tooling off of the blocker's left hand. Schlegel right into the block of Miss Dimitrova, a 17-year veteran. The story of this set so far, especially the last couple of points, has been Amelia Dimitrova. She's absolutely taking over, and that's what we expect to see so far in these opening matches is the stars that we expect to see. They're going to be the ones that go off. A native of Bulgaria. Had never been to the United States before she came over here to play for the Rise. Chal say is all you can say. This rise offense right now is just looking so in sync, even in out of system right there. Evans is diving to her knees, is able to put up a nice set for Chasse. When you're a setter, there's nothing better than an outside hitter being able to put that ball away for you when you're diving and flying across the court. Rise winner of the last four points. Coach Perez wants to talk about it here at set number two. Fury lost set number one. They've lost the last four points, but I don't think something we've talked about enough here tonight, Atlanta. Not at full strength. Obviously, we have not seen number one overall pick here tonight in Asia O'Neill, and also without one of their franchise players in Megan Courtney Lush tonight, as she's actually out with an illness. And Megan Courtney Lush is one of the all-time greats in college volleyball. She's also a phenomenal pro player. She's working her way back from just giving birth. Would have been seen in probably the libero jersey tonight, holding down that defense. She's played libero with our national, the U.S. national team for a while now. So missing some key pieces like Megan Courtney Lush, Asia O'Neill, Jenna Rosenthal is also out with an injury right now. But the Fury still has plenty of pieces they should be able to put together to fight back in this match. Dug out. A push shot. Schlegel. Dimitrova. Able to get to that was Drexel. This one again kept alive and yeah, over from the run. Raynell Jones, though, gets into the net and well, that'll get the crowd going here in the Van Andel. What a defensive play. All three touches there we saw on the rise. And then Sarah Sponsel able to one-handed get that ball over the net. She's a beach player, a pro beach player. She's actually already played in the Olympics as part of the youngest pair to play in the Olympics. And she's showing off right there with her defensive effort. Well, she was a defensive player of the year in the AVP just a couple years ago in 2022. This one lands over in the first row and an ace for the Rockets. 
One thing I haven't talked about enough so far this match is the importance of the serve and pass game. A lot of this match so far, we've seen the Rise go after it from their serve, and it's giving the Fury some fits like we just saw with that beautiful Chasse ace. I did it again. I jinxed her. <laughs> I jinxed her. Elena, that was all on you. I'm sorry. It's I'm okay. It's okay. Hey, but you know, a good ratio when you're serving is one ace to one error. She just got that there. Do you want those on back-to-back -back points, though? You know, it happens, all right? What would Coach George <laughs> say? What would Coach George say? Actually, let's better not share that. It's <laughs> back to serve. It's Rise Santo. She'll take that ace. She'll take that ace. <laughs> DB Trove right into the block. Sponsor. And lands on her own side of the net there for Raynell Jones. She didn't even know if she got the block or not, but able to pick up the point to Rose. Great press there from Raynell Jones. She's pressed, but she's not fully pressed over the net. So that ball just trickles down her chest, but she's there and she is a blocking threat when she's in front of an attacker. An overpass leads to an attack here. I don't want to jinx it again, but beautiful serve by Kayla Caffey there. The service pressure that the Rise is giving tonight is definitely giving them the opportunity to get that ball back and run their offense the way that they want to. And like I said, it's giving the Fury some fits. I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry, Kayla Caffey. I need to stop talking about how good they're serving. Elena, this is generational stuff right I, now. I mean, it really is. I, I, <laughs> this is this is about as good as the <laughs> offensive production we've seen out of them tonight. <laughs> it's Maria Schlegel back to serve. Charles Say, but dug out by Leon. Reagan Cooper gets it to fall home. They've tried to really give her some touches. First big swing we've seen laying around. That's a beautiful shot from her, too. She's only a rookie. Her first pro season, she had a fantastic college career finishing it off at Kansas. But that play right there, she took a little bit of heat off of it. She saw that the Rises right back defender was up high, so she's able to place it in that back corner. Just a really smart play shot by Reagan Cooper. And yeah, Reagan just a few months removed from a third team All-American year at Kansas. Out at sale, some good situational awareness from Schlegel to let that one go. Starting to see a little bit of momentum going the Fury's way. They're getting a couple good serves from the back line, and then they're able to get their offense going a little bit. They really need to start from the service line, be able to put the same pressure that the Rise is putting on them in their serve receive. Schlegel applying some pressure right now. Again, Maria. She played on the Spanish women national team. Maria is, is such a seasoned vet. Nine years of pro experience, and she's been able to work on that serve for a while. As Coach Gerwich actually wants to call the timeout. 17 out. More about Maria on the other side here. PVF on YouTube. Maria Schlegel, again, she's been able to spark a run, knock on wood for all those at home who are superstitious at the service line right now for the Fury. Dimitrova slams it right into the face of Leon, but we play on. Can the Fury get it to fall? Not that time. 
Reagan Cooper. Sponsor another great defensive play. Dug out by Schlegel. Slice shot not to be. Dimitrova. An overpass and just over on the second. Right again into the block. And Ray Nell Jones able to come up huge that time with Ashley wins at her side. A nice block to finish off that point, but I want to highlight the defensive effort on both sides of the court during that rally. We saw Leon absolutely take a ball like a champ, get back, keep playing. Defensive effort from both sides, and then you're able to finish off that point with a big block. That's a big momentum play when you can win points like that, when both teams are giving it their all, and then you get to go back from the service line after that. This is a big point for the Fury, especially when you have Maria Schlegel on that back line. She's a fantastic server for this team. Elena Sklar, I'm Brett Loftus. We're so happy you're choosing to join us here on your Thursday night. The PVF on YouTube, the second ever PVF game last night. Atlanta able to win it in five sets over Omaha in Omaha. And then here tonight, obviously, it is the Fury and the Rise. Tomorrow night, back in Orlando, as Orlando will play their first game in franchise history against the vibe of Atlanta. Check that one out on the PVF YouTube page as it'll begin at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Dimitrova not able to get it over the tape. This is what I expected to see from this Columbus Fury block. We highlighted earlier just how loaded they are in that middle blocker position. Raynell Jones is one of the best blockers in this entire country. What she does so well is she reads the setter on the other side of the net and then is able to read and react and put up a big block. Chausse, Leon, she's had quite the match. Reagan Cooper pins it on the back line. Reagan Cooper going up and over the blockers in front of her off of an out of system set. That's a really smart move. She sees that Marin Grote on the other side isn't completely pressed over so she can go over top of her to the deep left back corner. Reagan really come alive. Big reason why the Fury leads by three right now. Dimitrova. As it's sent right back. Jones just keeps it off the floor. Out of system, Cooper. Dimitrova. Big momentum swing, no pun intended, for the Rock. A perfect in-system pass from Sponsel gives setter Ashley Evans so many options, but when you have Amelia Dimitrova on that right side pin, who has just been so efficient tonight, that's exactly who you go to late in the set here when you're trying to close it out. Cooper having such a great set, but an attack error will set the Fury back in the rise within one. And that's the right swing there by Cooper. It looked like she was going for hands on a set that was just a tad bit too low for her. Just missed the hands so it flies a little bit deep. Amelia, we mentioned it. Her husband, Dennis, on the coaching staff here with Coach George. Into a big block. Cooper again out of system ball. How about it from Simone Abbott? Seems like when the Rise have needed big points here late in sets, they went to 2-7. This rise offense has so many options. We've talked about Claire Chasse. We've talked about Amelia Dimitrova. Simone Abbott has been absolutely efficient as well on that left side pin. We saw it right there, her connection with setter Ashley Evans. All right, first to win five here in the final stretch of set number two. They tried to pancake it, but instead Reagan Cooper gets it to fall on the hardwood. Looks like Dimitrova thought she had that one up. Head coach Kathy George shaking her head on the sideline. Doesn't look like she's going to be challenging that one, so they go right back to service Eve. I think Coach George might have made a late decision to challenge there. So, again, challenging a floor touch or no floor touch. Be interesting to see what Bolt 6 has on that replay system. This is the second challenge of the match. Coach George used one there at the end of set number one and obviously using one towards the end of set number two. This one perhaps hold a little bit higher stakes than that first one she used. 
Yeah, when you're late in the set and your players come to you as a coach and they say, no coach, I got that one up. Even if you originally, she's shaking her head, didn't think she had it up, you have to trust your players. And that's exactly what Coach George knows and did on that point. She's looking at Dimitrova and saying, did you actually get that ball up? In that point, you have to be honest. You have to say, yes, coach, I got it up. Or no, coach, that was down. But this late in the set, that's a really good time to use a challenge because that could be a momentum swinger for the point. All right, let's see what Bulk Six has got here with Amelia Dimitrova. We're looking to see if she got her entire hand underneath that ball and whether the ball hit the floor or not. What I'm seeing is that she got all hand on that ball. That's how the Grand Rapids faithful is reacting here as well inside of Van Andel Arena. Again, a capacity crowd here tonight for volleyball, 7,805 on hand. So they'll take that point off the board for the Fury and we will replay it still at 20 up. Abbott, Leon, Reagan Cooper, D nine. Marin Grote coming in off the bench and able to make her impact and presence known right away, closing that block, pressed over. She knows that ball is going to the outside pin, so she's fully releasing and putting up a big block. That's a that's a big point for this Rise team. The California native able to contribute to a two point swing. And two points really big here late in the sets. An attack error. And now a two-point lead for the Rocks. Coach Perez has to think about using a timeout. And he will call one. Three points away are the Rides. We're taking a two-set to none lead here in the inaugural game in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is the PBF on YouTube. here on the squad and one of the two team captains, Amelia Dimitrova, trying to serve us out here in set number two in the Grand Rapids Rise, trying to take a two sets to none lead. But don't you know it's not gonna be that straightforward. Reagan Cooper answers big right out of the timeout. It's exactly what you wanna see out of the timeout if you're the Fury. A great pass, able to run the offense and then Reagan Cooper in a first ball side out, able to get one of your best servers back on the service line. Try to rally back. Right now you're only down one point late in the set. This could be a huge swing of whether you can tie it up 1-1 one, one, or go down two sets to none. The pride is San Juan, Puerto Rico. Havana Ortiz de Jesus. Horn. Back-to-back -back points now for the Fury, and now it's the first of three points. That all starts from the service line. She's able to get an overpass from the rise so that the Fury can run their offense. This is a rotation that you they want to try to close this set out in so that they can tie it 1-1. Abbott, Schlegel, Reagan Cooper, a slice shot not to be. And in a set that she has reigned, the rise able to rise above. 
I like that shot. She's really mixing up her shots right there. She's just trying to cross court shot, hit that a little bit sharp, just a little bit wide. I would love to see Rai Santos go right back to her as she's been a player that's really stepped up for them in the second set. Dug out though by Sponsel. And somehow Sarah able to get it back over. Ford took a lot off to get that point. Really, really smart shot there by Caitlin Horde. She knows that the rise defense was just playing, pursuing a ball off the court. So they're just getting back into their bases. So tip that ball right into the middle. Defenders probably aren't ready to move forward. Reagan Cooper into the block. Chausse got the free ball and absolutely punished it. Claire Chasse absolutely showing off on that ball. Just the second contact, she goes up, takes a huge rip on the ball to terminate and give the rise set point. And an ace will win it from Marin Grove. Two sets that on lead. The mitten is rocking.
It's halftime. Whoever says that in volleyball, that's what we do here in the PVF. A little bit about a 10 minute intermission after the second set. And through two sets thus far, Miss Elena Shar, it has been all Grand Rapids rises. Here are some stats thus far from set one and set two. Just like the stats show right here, the story of this match so far has been the Rises offense. 28 kills to just the Furies, 18. Going into this match, I was expecting the Fury to put up an absolute wall on their block. Now, we know they're missing a couple key players like Asia O'Neill and Jenna Rosenthal, but the Grand Rapids Rise has been the one putting up the wall with the block. Six blocks to the Fury, zero, and then five aces to three aces. They're getting it done, kind of firing on all cylinders right now. Let's hit on that a little bit more. Six blocks to none. I mean, we're talking about a Columbus team, like you said. I mean, we hit on a pregame show about how fierce those middle blockers are. Yeah, they're a little depleted there tonight. But still, when you got a young lady like a Raynell Jones playing in the middle, when you got Caitlin Horde playing in the middle, you would expect to at least have one through two sets. What is Coach Perez telling them right now? I think it all starts from the service line. Being able to set up a good block, you have to put some pressure on that other team's serve, receive, and pass. Right now, Columbus Fury isn't serving too tough, so Grand Rapids is able to get their offense going pretty easily almost every time out of serve, receive. So what Coach Perez is probably telling his Fury team right now is get it going from the service line so that you can give your blockers an opportunity to actually read and set up a solid block in front of the, the rise attackers. And what about this crowd here tonight? They are absolutely electric, and they're about ready to erupt if the rise can win set number three. Don't think it's going to be that straightforward. More PVF on YouTube up next in about three and a half minutes.
Will we have our first sweep in PVF history or will we have a repeat of history? Last night at the same juncture, Atlanta led two sets to none after the intermission and then our Omaha able to storm back 2-2. We went to a fifth set in which Atlanta won again. Miss Elena Schlank, Miss Elena Sklar, I'm Brett Loftus. This has been a memorable night already. And can the rise continue to ignite it? Last night's match between Atlanta and Omaha was obviously historic, being the first match of the inaugural season of this league. But it also did not disappoint. A five-set thriller. Right now, if I'm the rise, I'm wanting to close this out because they know that they have a target on their back and the Columbus Fury is not just going to go away. Ashley Evans. Again, we've talked about her quarterback in the offense. She's also been magnificent at the service line. She's just such a fun player to watch because she is such a high-level player. We watched her during her career at Purdue, but now she's been playing overseas. We have her back in the United States, one of the best setters in this entire country. Miscommunication, but still able to send that one over was Cooper. Blair Chelsea. That's a name you've probably heard once or twice. Getting right back into it here in set number three. What a shot from Claire Chaus Chausse. Passing to attacking. Right there, the setter is not taking the line. Santos is staying inside the court a little bit. When you give Chausse that much room to hit the ball down, you see that power. She's going to put that ball away. Dug out by Sponsel. Chausse right into the block. Now the Fury trying to substantiate something offensively. Chalce. Finally able to warm up around the campfire. Really smart shot there by Chalce. Last point we saw her hammer a ball down the line. Right here, she just tips that ball right over the hands of the blocker. She's really making that right back defender work because right now they're expecting her to drill that ball down the line. She tips that right into the donut. Wins. Right back to Chalce. And able to win the point off a block tip is the Rams. And the start of this set has truly just been the Claire Chalce show. Kill after kill right there, being able to clip the middle blocker's hands for a nice tool. That ball looked like it was going deep, but Chalce was aiming for hands and is able to score. Dump shot trying to switch it up. Right back on the other end, Chelsea doing it all. 5 0 run to begin set number three. I like the decision by Santos there to try to send that ball over. We haven't seen setters be very active in this match and try to take the ball on two, but the rise was ready for it, and Chelsea is able to just put that ball away and keep Ashley Evans on the service line. So right into the block. Wins. Caffey never quite got it over the net. A rare miscue that we've seen so far between Evans and Caffey. Looks like that ball was maybe a little too high or Caffey was a little bit too early, but she's hitting that ball on her way down. It's a really difficult thing to do is when you're falling to the ground, try to still get that ball over the net. So that's a play you just kind of want to wash off next play. I wouldn't be surprised if Evans went back to Caffey to try to get that connection strong again. Janasia Moore checks into the contest first time tonight. And just as a reminder, eight subs are allowed. Dimitrova. And again, just some miscommunication from the Fury leads to another point for Grand Rapids. And that was a good block touch by Janasia Moore coming in, able to get that ball played up high. Caitlin Horde doesn't really see where the ball is, so that's where the miscommunication comes in. But that's a play that you should be able to cover and run your offense off of. Yeah, and if you're enjoying the PVF on YouTube last night and tonight, go for a third straight day as a dump shot from Rye Santos. Orlando, excuse me, Atlanta at Orlando tomorrow night at 7 Eastern. But what about this shot from Rye? I was just talking about how the setters haven't been offensive yet tonight. That's a great decision. When you're a front row setter, you want to make yourself a threat. You want to make the blockers on the other side respect you and realize that you can score as an attacker as well. An overpass. How about more? Yeah. 
And then able to finish it off, Janasia Moore. Janasia Moore coming in in this third set is able to make an impact right away. That's a really smart shot. She hit a hard ball first and then is able to just roll shot that ball into the middle. She's a rookie playing in her first professional game, her first professional season right now. And that's a shot that takes years to develop, which she did when she was playing at Ohio State and Tennessee for her last season. Yeah, all SEC honoree in 2023 at the University of Tennessee. Miss Caffey, don't let her get going in set number three. Smart shot by Kayla Caffey there. Still looks like they're a little bit misconnecting between setter and middle, but she's able to throw that ball to the deep corner instead of taking a full swing on it and still get a core off of, uh, score off of a quick set. We're not going to put that one on Elena. It was a service error. Still three-point lead here for Grand Rapids. And if you're just joining us, Elena Scholar, I'm Brett Loftus. Two sets to none lead here for Grand Rapids. They won the first one pretty decisively, 25-17. The second one by just two, 25-23. How about that shot from Marin Grote? Marin Grote made her impact known in the second set with one really important block. But right here, she's running what we call a three ball. So she's being set in between the right side and middle blocker on the Fury side. Once again, connecting with Ashley Evans, who has just been running a masterclass of an offense. Marin also had that set winning ace there to end the second set. The joust at the net. One by the rise. Point also one by the rise. Rise are getting off to a really nice start so far this set. And what's been happening is been, they've been able to put together service runs, whether it's two points at a time, three points at a time. And the Fury is just kind of serving one and out. So the Fury is going to want to get back on the service line and get a string of points together. Amy Trova can't sneak it in the line. It's also worthy to note, again, haven't had any service violations. Again, that 15-second service clock tonight. Those who are familiar with baseball, kind of like the pitch clock that was implemented a couple seasons ago. Dimitrova, able to get that one in. So back to a five point lead for the run. Once again, a great job by Evans to isolate Dimitrova on that right side of the court. The Fury blockers have now adjusted and are putting up two blockers on her and she's still able to score. Back row attack. Fury to Moore. Dump shot. Cooper. Now they want to go back to Chalce, who is blocked. Miss Ashley wins. Really great block set up there by Ashley Wentz. As the right side blocker, it's your job to read where the set on the other side of the net is going and then set up your block so your middle can close to you. Right there, she did a great job realizing the set was a little inside the court, so she has to stop short and set up the block inside the court. Moore pushes it on the second shot. She's trying to get it over the defense. Moore has to dig it out. Rise in system. Chasse able to find the bagel. Chasse just having so much success tonight, and a lot of it is because of her vision as an attacker. That's a set that's a little bit tight for her, but she's able to see the defense on the other side of the net and then place that ball where she knows the Fury defenders are going to have to try to dive to save. Coach George said Claire Colt, Chasse, just such a joy to be around. And Obviously leads by the way that she plays. Dimitrova over to Chalce. Able to paint it in the back corner. A block tip. Let's see if Coach Perez wants to challenge this. You have to really admire the hustle there from Ashley Evans chasing down that ball. And she's able to put up a good out of system ball that Chalce can still take a swing off of to try to score. Seems like Coach Perez wants to challenge, maybe having an issue with the tablet. As he wants to challenge that block touch, he's going to go and talk to the lead official. Again, he and the official 
Seems like he's trying to plead his case that they tried to touch on the tablet, not able to do so. And now he will be awarded the challenge. What a great system here in bolt six. And again, it is confirmed by the lead official that they are challenging the block touch. And this is a good time to challenge if you're Coach Perez, because right now your team is down six points. They're down two sets. This is a time in the set where you really need to try to battle back, build a little bit of a little bit of momentum. And this point could be getting them back on the service line if they reverse it and give them a no touch. Get them back on the service line. Try to build a little bit of momentum. That's exactly what Coach Perez is trying to do for his team right now. Obviously, if you're the Rise, you're hoping that they see that touch and you can continue on the service run. I'm trying to see here on this replay, touch Rai Santos there on the near side. Obviously, with all these HD cameras that are set up here with Bolt Six, shall say no block touch there on the front. Pretty clear, no front row block touch. Again, replay center located in Frisco, Texas. And with the technology that we have here in the PBF, as Elena alluded to earlier, we want to be able to speed up the process. And now that the challenge is complete, it will be overturned. That point will be awarded to the Fury as they draw back within four. Good call there. And another great usage of the Bolt 6 technology. So again, the rise, one might surmise that they have, again, the momentum in the building here in their home opener, the inaugural game of both franchises here for the Fury and the Rise. But if Columbus has done anything well tonight, Elena, it has been at the service line. They have really been able to get things going, and when their runs have been sparked, it's been here. That's exactly what this Fury team needs right now. They have set her Rye Santos in the front row and she's proven herself to be a threat. They wanna keep her in that front row so she can run her offense and be a threat as an attacker. There you go, how about that front row defense? Santos up there with Caitlin Horn. She's also being a threat as a blocker, getting up there, sealing the net. That's a great job pressing over by her. When you're not fully pressed over, that's when you get tooled by attackers. Hoard, a joust, and Hoard will win the point for Columbus. Also worthy to note that last challenge, since Coach Perez won it, he will be able to keep his challenges here in set number three. I always love seeing a good joust, and the key to winning a joust, which Caitlin Hoard did just there, is pushing second. Whoever pushes second, doesn't matter if you're taller or stronger, if you're the one that's able to get that second touch on the ball, you're gonna be able to win that joust. And an ace. Ashley wins. Came in there in that set number two. And here in set number three, been a really big spark. And this is the service pressure that the Fury is going to need in order to fight back in this match. Ashley Wentz providing it. Chelsea. She'll wind up again. And Claire Chelsea will end the mini run of the Fury. Not surprised that Ashley Evans is looking to Claire Chasse right now. She has been the go-to hitter in this match so far. And when you're getting in situations where you want to side out, a lot of the times setters like to set the hot hand. That's exactly what Chasse has been. And now it puts Evans back on the line. Reagan Cooper, right to spawn. So another joust. This time, Kayla Caffey in the rise will rise above. One thing I haven't talked about enough is how solid Sarah Sponsel is in the back row. She's able to read attackers so well and then makes digs that she just looks easy. When you're a great libero, you put yourself in the right spot and you make those digs that go unnoticed, but they're really important by keeping your team alive in points. 
And again, I think we talk oh so much about your outside hitters and only attack. Defense has really been a strong suit tonight, and I think we had to expect that with so many unknowns. Absolutely. Going into the match, you know that all of these players out here can kill a ball. It's really going to be who can defend better, who can keep plays alive, and who can put up big blocks. Pushed over, Dimitrova. Chalse, sponsor kept it alive. Chalse again. Whistle. And a net violation called on Columbus. The Fury is doing a good job in this set of keeping plays alive. In the first two sets, we saw quicker side outs for the Rise, but right now the Fury is really making them work. Even though the Rise won that point, the Fury is making them work for it each and every point. Moore wanted a touch, instead will not get one. Time out on the floor. Rise leads it by four here in set number three. You know when you got them up and dancing, they're feeling it. And the Rise fans are feeling it. Up two sets to none, up four points here in set number three. They are trying to roll through their first ever franchise victory and hopefully a sweep. Though the Fury have been playing pretty furious here in set number three. As Elena said earlier, making the Rise earn every single point wins. Cooper defended well. Chalce wins, defends the campfire. Cooper comes up again, and she's able to find a piece of hard. What if anybody's going to get him back into it? It's going to be Reagan Cooper. I really like that setter Rye Santos went back to Reagan Cooper in the back row in back-to-back -back offensive plays there. She didn't score in the first one. She goes right back to her, and she's able to find a way to put that ball away. She has been a really bright spot in this Fury's offense throughout the match. Been a little quiet in this third set, so I'm not surprised that Rye Santos is trying to get her involved because she's been fairly efficient tonight. Ortiz de Jesus, mentioned her earlier tonight, Puerto Rican native, played at Hofstra. Serve a specialist to see why. Abbott. Joust. A celebration, but the point continues on. Dimitrova. Now they can stand to their feet. Those are always fun ones. When you're in a play, you think you have it won, but you have to play until you hear the whistle. That's exactly what both of these teams did here. And then, of course, Dimitrova on the right side, hammering that one home. Moore, right into the block. Great play by Santos. Moore into it again. Kept the line, but not able to get it back over. A lift called on Columbus. The rise is starting to pull away a little bit in this third set, and a big part of it has just been the effort on the court. They are giving all-out effort for every single ball. We've seen defensive effort, that blocking front right there. They're moving together as a unit to put up a block in the front row. 
And again, I, I know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but Columbus, when they have started something tonight, it has been either a forced and unforced error by Grand Rapids. Perhaps this is where a run starts for them to get back into this one. And you have setter Gabby Blossom coming in off the bench, trying to give a little bit of a service spark back there for the Fury. Dimitrova. Leon. They go back to Abbott. Leon can't dig that one out. Rise are seven away. The Rises transition offense has been absolutely on point this match. They're able to put up controlled balls that Ashley Evans has options with. She's able to decide who she wants to set. On that ball, is a little bit obvious she was going to the outside there, but Simone Abbott, no problem, puts that ball away. Dimitrova with the service error. So now the Fury and Janae Jamorovic and Janae's earlier. Played at Ohio State and Tennessee. Played this past season at Tennessee. And quite the college athlete as most were. Not able to get back over and again, miscommunication has been a detriment tonight for Columbus. Add a kill to the list for Sarah Sponsel, but if you're on the Fury side right now, that's an error that shouldn't be happening, especially this late in the match. They're looking just a little bit out of sorts. You put some new players in with, with Ashley Wentz and Gabby Blossom, try to spark something, but you need, really need that all-out effort to be able to fight back in the match. Shannon Scully comes in to serve, one of the serving specials. Moore right into the tape. See the rise, starting to fill it a little bit. Not all the way there, but they can sense it. Led by Scully at the service line. She won the Beach Volleyball National title back in 2021. Raynell Jones, able to get her first kill since late in set number one. That's a big point for the Fury, able to side out right away, first ball, side out. Gabby Blossom going to Raynell Jones, who's a really big threat when she's in the front row, when she's in that middle. Caitlin Horde now is going to be in the front row, also a fantastic threat in the middle. So if I'm Gabby Blossom, I want to try to run my offense up through that middle of the court to try to get the rise defense not to be not ready for it. Jones, a fantastic dig. This one. Had tuned into the floor from Marin Grove. Talking about middles, the middle connection for the rise has been great all night. Right here, Marin Grote sees that she has a big blocker up in front of her with Caitlin Horde, so she just throws that ball down. That's a really veteran smart move by Grote. Claire, Charles Sick. Some of the plays Claire Chasse makes have me just completely shocked. That's one of those. That set little tight to the net. She has a double block up in front of her. She reaches, elevates, and is able to just throw that ball down. Cooper. This one just trying to fend it off. Grote set it a little bit too far over. It's almost self-protection there from Mary Grote more than anything else. Chalce. Back over on one. They go back to Claire. Into the big time block of Blossom. And who? Really smart block set up there by the Fury. They know that that ball is going to Claire Chasse. Gabby Blossom sets the block up exactly where it's supposed to be. And then Caitlin Horde pressed over, sealing the tape. Dimitrova had it touched. Blossom straight up, straight down. Fury back within four. Really high IQ play there by Gabby Blossom. She knows that ball is tight, and the rise blockers aren't going up with her. Maybe there was a miscommunication, didn't understand she was front row. That's a great, great move by Blossom. Chalce, what a dig from Leon. Cooper. Sponsor, they go back to Claire. Another good dig from Wins. Reagan Cooper. 
the spark plug here for the Fury. And the Fury are not going away. Since setter Gabby Blossom came in, she's provided a little bit of a spark. Of course, sending that one to Reagan Cooper, who's been able to step up when the Fury needs points and able to keep fighting in this third set. Kathy George wants to have a conversation with her squad, up by three and three away from winning the whole thing. Here in set number three. You played in some big matches. This perhaps one of the biggest these ladies on the floor have played in. How do you loosen up here if you're the rise and close it out? If you're the rise, you just keep doing what you're doing. It's been working so far all match. Get that ball in setter Ashley Evans' hands. Feed it to Claire Chasse, because who else? She has been hammering the ball home all night, and especially late in sets, you go to that hot hitter. Exactly what we see here, Claire Chasse has a double block up in front of her, is still able to score into that deep corner. Ashley Evans. Slide play. Can't get it to work for Horde. Dimitrova. And now set and match point. Upcoming for the ride. If the Van Andel tonight isn't giving you goosebumps, I don't know what will. An overpass, punished by Kayla Caffey. The Grand Rapids rise win the first ever three-setter in PVF history.
about that? A three set victory for the rise of Grand Rapids. The first ever in the history of the PBF and then the second night of the league. I mean, truly, where else would you rather be than here with us on the PBF on YouTube tonight? I'm Brett Loftus. She is the wonderful former Spartan herself, getting to call her first ever professional match here in the state of Michigan tonight, Elena Scalar. And Elena, our final stats to look at tonight. I think really what tells the number is that top line. Absolutely. The story of this entire match was the Grand Rapids rise and their efficient offense. And then Columbus Fury struggling to get their offense going. The rise looked like a well-oiled machine. 46 kills to just 18 with the Fury. And then, of course, Claire Chasse was leading the way with 21 of those kills. It was just a complete one-sided match tonight in the rise's home opener. Again, Brett Loftus, Elena Scalar, and in a night that means so much to the volleyball community, to the PVF as a whole, but really to Grand Rapids, Michigan. I mean, this is one of the fastest growing markets in all of volleyball. Elena, your final thoughts on tonight. I'm just so excited that professional volleyball is in the United States. We get to watch Pro Volleyball Federation for the next couple months. And then these two teams have a lot of promise. Obviously, we saw the rise tonight. They're a beautiful offense run by Ashley Evans. But the Columbus Fury missing a couple key players. But they're also a really loaded team. I don't think they played quite to their potential tonight. So these are two teams that are going to be very strong in this league. Overall, I am just so excited to get to watch these athletes continue to compete and congratulations to both squads again the fury their first ever game here tonight they don't have their home opener until february the 21st however they do play again at orlando on february the 16th for grand rapids they will be at atlanta on february the night that is their next game in action speaking of the vibe more pvf tomorrow night on the pvf youtube channel as atlanta will go down to Orlando where the Valkyries will have their first game in franchise history. For that is how we have to leave you here tonight. For Elena Scalar, I'm Brett Loftus, thanking you for joining our family here, the PVF on YouTube tonight. And on behalf of an entire crew, ran masterfully by Mr. Ryan Bradley tonight. Again, I'm Brent, Brett Loftus, telling you to have a safe, happy, and a healthy, wonderful night. And how about it? This is Pro Volleyball in the USA.